Do you remember when learning was about sitting quietly in the classroom, listening to a teacher talking about all the stuff that you need to learn? And later on in university, it was about attending lectures and more classes, listening to the experts in front and then writing all these exams. And then I guess for a lot of us in the room here, we then moved on to the working world and the part of like learning, at least the standardized learning was over. And it was more about acquiring a new skill once in a while. Maybe we got sent off to a training if we were lucky. And I guess some of you also had these nice development talks where you sit together with your manager for like an hour a year, an hour and a half if they're really good, and you fill out a form or you choose a class from like a standardized training program, and that was called like your development. I myself, I'm, my name is Natalia Hedeser, I'm an HR professional, so for many, many years I was working in corporations being responsible for exactly that. So. I am also responsible for the standardized form and the standardized development programs. Of course, you can argue whether they are efficient, whether this is really successful learning. There are reasons, I guess, for or against that, but uh, I always believe that people come up with ideas if they serve themselves and their goals in some ways. What I'm certain about, though, is today, and that is after working for an employer that had a very agile IT team and me being a very curious person and starting to talk to scrum masters and agile coaches and other people involved in these teams about development needs and what I as HR person could actually do to help them and support them is that as long as we still think of learning and working as two separate worlds where we either send people to classes to acquire new skills or have them put that into practice, we will not succeed with continuous learning and improvement in organizations. So I think we need to focus on bringing more learning into the actual organization and learning through collaboration every single day. And last but not least, focusing on having the employees themselves in charge for their development. So what's the challenge we're looking at? Well, we already heard a lot about words like VUCA and globalization. We all know, I mean, just looking here in the audience, that digitalization is at our fingertips all the time. Also, customization is not just more important, but also more available than ever. I mean, if you just look at my laptop, my favorite color is red. That's not hard to guess if you look at all my accessories. But you can do that and just order everything online if you want to customize your stuff. And we're also looking at a world where people strive to find a higher purpose or some meaning in what they do every single day, not just in their private life, but at work as well. And that also means that all these forces around us today, of course, don't leave out the way we learn and how learning and development needs to develop in organizations. If you follow uh, the very recommendable book, 100 Year Life, today we're looking at careers that span out 60 to 70 years. And in average, we change our jobs every four to five years as well. And for every new skill we acquire, we're looking at a half-life of only five years. So today, when we talk about learning and development, we need to consider these factors and have a different view on how to do that in corporations. And of course, we also got a lot of opportunities at our hands. I mean, learning on demand 24-7, it's already out there. And things that we thought being science fiction are orderable online as well. This is just an example from a Berlin-based company in Germany who is doing virtual reality training for product assembly lines for the car industry. I visited them a couple weeks ago and I was just blown away by what is actually possible today. Like I could use these systems with virtual reality glasses and learn how to assemble a car through that. It's already there. And what we also know, and which I found a very overlooked fact, is we have a huge knowledge about how people learn effectively. 
And before I dive deeper into that subject, I would like you to grab your neighbor, hopefully it's somebody you haven't met yet, and just quickly think about what was your personally best learning experience. Anything that comes to mind, please share. You want to be my neighbor? We're happy to continue that conversation either at the coffee corner or at any other break soon. So I just said that we already know a lot of how people learn effectively. And of course, there's a ton of research out there. I just want to share one example that I actually have as a reminder on my desk um, whenever I think about learning or development activities. And it's from the work of Sharon Bowman. Some of you might have come across her uh, with books like Training from the Back of the Room or Brain Sciences. And what she basically does wonderfully, I think, is take all the research in neurosciences and break it down to really practical principles on how to create effective learning. And the one example I would like to show you today are her six trumps. So six basic principles on how to make trainings sticks. And the first one is movement trumps sitting. So feel free to move around. Talking trumps listening. Images trump words. Writing trumps reading. Shorter trumps longer. And last but not least, different trumps same. And if you work that into any training initiative and keep that in mind, I think you can already improve a lot. And what Sharon also did is uh, develop this outline for any kind of training session. It's her 4C map. I will not go into further detail, but if you have any interest in like learning initiatives and things around that, and I can highly recommend training from the back of the room and similar works because you find like tons of examples, just like little training bits, little initiatives, little exercises that improve the training experience a lot. So with all that out there and all the technical opportunities, I sometimes wonder why still in many corporations I also work with, their world of learning is still a lot about acquiring knowledge, maybe not through books anymore, but rather online. It's about working hard to achieve something in a certain area. It's still a lot about certification and degrees, especially I'm German, so you always need some paperwork to verify what you're good at. And it's always a lot about an expert standing in front of you telling you what they know best. And then on the other side, there is their world of work, where it's about handling knowledge, where it's about putting things into practice all day long, where it's about sharing your knowledge with others to achieve results and about getting things done. And I believe that as long as you keep the learning and the working separate in any way, 
continuous learning will not really improve in our organizations. Of course, we've already come a long way, but I think we can do a lot more to merge these two worlds together. And I just wanted to share one example um, of what also bigger corporations can do, and that is uh, the example of implementing internal trainers and facilitators. And to bring by that learning into the organization and also learn through collaboration. I'll just skip that for now. So when we connect the opportunities we have, the technical ones, the research we have, and also agile principles and methods for the adaptability and the flexibility in our learning, then we can improve learning quite a bit. So the case I just quickly wanted to share with you is a company I've been working with in Germany. It's called Jochen Schweizer. So it's a company selling experiences. So what you do is you buy a voucher for skydiving or a dinner or whatever else is out there. It's very popular around Christmas. And then you share it with friends or you just go do it yourself. And it's a medium-sized company with uh, 400 employees going through a major transformation since a couple of years. And what their head of HR wanted to do is not just to come up with another training initiative or improve the programs they had, but they said they came from increasing motivation and engagement in total, and especially focusing on increasing the value added in meetings and trainings. And the solution they came up with was a total shift from instructor to learner-led and driven trainings. And so what uh, we did together was we implemented a set of internal agile trainers and facilitators. So a group of employees who were interested in the subject could have been scrum masters or agile coaches, people from HR. But we also had a couple of people joining from like marketing or finance who were interested. And then enabling them to facilitate valuable meetings and workshops and also develop and hold training initiatives for their colleagues. So just to give you an idea what they're currently doing out there in that company, so they're moderating team meetings for other departments. Not even speaking about like agile events or something like that, but just regular meetings and making sure that people have an agenda, that they know what they're talking about, that the right people are in the room, that it's focusing on goals and outcome rather than just having a discussion and leaving the room. They're moderating retrospective because they wanted to uh, focus on having retrospective also in other departments. So they trained this group of employees and then they spread out into other departments, facili facilitating the first retrospectives in other teams. They also created many trainings for business related topics. So I'm not talking about like acquiring totally new skills that maybe the organization doesn't have yet, but like onboarding trainings or sales trainings or one of the team members come uh, across as like the Excel expert they had in the company. Who he, so he started doing Excel trainings, but not just like random Excel trainings, but customized and tailored to the company's needs with their own business cases. They also started to implement story and impact mapping. So whenever like projects would start in some departments, they would then um, hire one of these moderators and say, hey, can you help us out with like a story mapping exercise just to get a different perspective? They would design workshops and also moderate them when it was, for example, about team collaborations, topics like that. They started doing daily stand-ups and much, much more. And what they learned for like the first couple months that's, uh, that they've been doing that, so I talked to the head of HR, um, like two or three months ago, is um, that for them it was really essential now looking back that they were looking for volunteers and a very diverse team. So for one, making sure that you have people who are really interested in the subject. That's not a role that you can just, you know, like assign to somebody. And uh, a diverse team so that departments in this facilitator team can really learn from each other as well. They also find it very important that the employees drive the whole process. So, of course, HR initiated the process, but then they let the employees decide on how to develop it further, if they want it to grow or if they want it to start small at the beginning. 
it was though essential to support the team in some ways because as you might know if there's something new like that out there in the organization people might be skeptical and it takes some time to grow and get some credibility and also to keep people motivated along the way so that's where HR and some other people jumped in to support the team and what I found uh, really beautiful was that she also told me that we should not underestimate the power this team had to actually drive change and transformation. So it was not the typical set of like change agents that were trained to actually do that, but just by doing what they did, moderating, facilitating, helping out teams bit by bit, they were actually like the best change agent they ever had. And of course, this is just one initiative and it didn't stop there. So they started many, many more initiatives to improve like continuous learning and cooperation throughout the company. And for the last two minutes, I would just like to ask you, because we have a lot of collective intelligence and a lot of experience here, do you have any examples you would like to add what you have seen in action to kind of bring the world of learning and working together and improve continuous learning? in the companies you've worked at. Any spontaneous examples? Knowledge sharing sessions, yeah, good example. Okay. Yeah, my principal, thank you. What else? <laughs> mm -hmm. Exactly, yeah. Just looking at the time, I think uh, we can just collect a lot more examples and I'm happy to do that together with you in the speaker's corner right after the next keynote. But just to sum it up, I think we've got a lot of opportunities out there that if we connect the world of learning and working together by bringing more learning into the organization and by more learning through collaboration and giving the church and the driver's seat to the employees, we can improve a lot and before we meet again at the coffee corner i want to thank you for your attention and i want to leave you with one of my most favorite quotes about teaching and learning from a very wise man who said we cannot teach people anything we can only help them discover it within themselves thank you